All right, welcome back. This is uh, Sullivan here, and we are on page 373 today. We're starting topic three, which are rational functions. All right, uh, we're gonna learn how to grasp some rational functions today. Uh, look at some things, uh, some multiple representations, some graphs, some tables, things like that. All right, so let's get into it. All right, first thing we wanna do is talk about this. All right, so what they're saying is, we have f of x is a function x. All right, it's very simple. So when I fill out that table, if my x value is negative one, my f of x value is negative one. It's just the line f of x equals x or y equals x. But then they're saying g of x is this rational function. Rational function is when we have a fraction, all right? And specifically, rational functions are we need a variable in the denominator, in the x. All right, so let's see what happens here when we have that situation going on. Um, we're going to fill this table out. A couple of things you probably need to remember, um, not by any fault of your own per se, but, you know, along the way, people forget things. This is the inverse of this, right? So this should be pretty easy to fill out. If I want to plug this in, this is 1 over negative 1, and that divides to negative 1. This is 1 over negative 2, which is negative 1 half. This is 1 over negative 3, which is negative 1 third. This is 1 over negative 4, which is uh, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fifth, and negative 1 sixth. All right, over here, 1 over 1 is 1. This is obviously the positive values. All right. All right, now there's a huge number we're missing here, 0, right? Like, we just skipped 0. So what is 1 over 0? Well, we are not allowed to divide by 0, are we? So that's going to bring up some interesting things. Let's plot these points. So we have negative 1, 1. Oh, excuse me, negative 1, negative 1 right here. We have negative 2 and like a half. Negative 3 and like a third. Ooh, you can see it's going real close right into here, isn't it? All right, and on this side we have one one, which is right here, and then we have same thing, same situation going on here. We're getting really close to our x-axis, but it's really not touching it. All right, all right, let's keep going with some x values here. All right, so again, we already know this one. This is negative one because one. Now this is going to flip it. This is an inverse. I want the inverse of that, so this is actually going to be negative two. This is going to be negative 10. This is going to be negative 100. Ah, here you go. 1 over 0, undefined. Not allowed to divide by 0. This will be 100. This will be 10. This will be 2. This will be 1. All right, so let's graph these lines. So at negative a half, when x is negative a half, I go to 2. When x is negative 1 tenth, I go to 10. All right, now you can start to see. All right. It's getting very close to my y-axis. Very close to my x-axis, very close to my y-axis. Same situation up here, all right? Do you think it'll ever touch that axis? Well, if we get these big numbers bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, it's never gonna equal zero, and that's true because of this. It'll never equal zero, okay? So let's talk about a few important things about this graph, all right? Um, how is it similar to graphs we've done before? How is it different? Well, it's similar. I mean, it curves, quadratics curve. Um, how is it different? Well, it has two distinct parts, doesn't it? They don't connect. Like, well, that's the first time we've had that happen. We also have it um, um, never touching the axis, okay? We haven't really dealt with anything like that this year. All right, so those are a couple of similarities and differences. All right, let's do end behavior. All right, let's take a look. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches what? Let's take a look. So as x goes out forever, normally graphs go up or down. That's all we've dealt with. But what is this approaching? It's approaching zero. It's getting really close to my y value of zero, isn't it? All right, let's try the other side. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches, let's see, what it. what is it approaching? Again, zero, it's approaching zero. It's never gonna pass it, it's never gonna equal it, but it's approaching zero, okay? All right, 
Describe it as x approaches zero from the left and then zero from the right. So what happens when I'm approaching zero? I'm right here, approaching zero from the left. As I approach zero from the left, what happens? Goes straight down, goes to negative infinity. So what happens as it approaches from the left? Look, as x approaches zero from the left, I can put it like this, my y's go to negative infinity. All right, well now it says from the right, as it approaches zero from the right, what happens? Oh, they go to positive infinity, all right? So as x approaches zero from the right, that plus in the corner just means from the right, f of x goes to positive infinity. That's new, that's new stuff we have not done that in before. All right, let's go to the next page. All right, number three. So does the graph ever intersect a horizontal line, y equals zero? So this line, y equals zero, no, it never intersects. Why does it not intersect? Well, we can see on the graph it never intersects. We can see on that table that every time we had these values, they were reciprocals and they were getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but they're never gonna equal zero. And they cannot equal zero because we cannot divide by zero, right? All right, is it ever gonna approach the vertical line? Nope, same thing's happening, right? The values here, when we get closer to here, they skyrocket, right? So as I get close, they skyrocket. But again, I cannot put an x is zero in there. I'll never have the value of x equals zero. All right, C says to find the domain and range. So let's take a look. Domain are x values. All right, so all my x values work, except for zero. So I'm gonna write it as an interval. So from negative infinity to zero, it works. And from zero to positive infinity, it works, okay? This means basically all the real numbers work, but x cannot be zero. If I included zero, I would have had brackets like this. That means I would include zero. My range is very similar, all right? The only number I can't work with here is zero. Okay. All right, on page 378, we're gonna talk real quick sidebar, like something off to the side. This is how we can write domain and range. And we've done probably both of these at the top all right, so if we said all real numbers except for four, that would mean x is greater than four or x is less than four, but it cannot equal four, right? And then the range would be all the y's greater than four or all the y's less than four, but it cannot equal it. Same thing as we just wrote here. So the negative infinity to four and four to positive infinity, it's not a bracket. A bracket would mean it's included. Now we have a new one. So this one is called set notation. And how I read this is, all the x's such that, or given that, x is not four. So all the x's such that x is not four, set notation. All the y's such that y is not four. So they wanted us to do the um, example we just did. So here's my domain, here's my range. Uh, this was y could not be zero or x could not be zero. So really the only one you don't know would be the bottom one. And I would, again, I would read it, the set of all points where all x's such that x cannot equal zero. The set of all y's such that y cannot equal zero. That's what we're talking about. If you want, pause this and write that down, okay? All right, so again, a rational function is any function that you can write as a ratio. Ratio is just a fancy word for fraction. So we have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on the bottom. We have two polynomials. Remember, polynomials have x's with numerical powers, or they are just numbers, like one, two, okay, things like that. On the next page, on page 379, the big thing here is we're talking about what a vertical asymptote is and a horizontal asymptote, to be honest. We have vertical asymptotes, which is right here. And that's created in our um, domain, right? X was not allowed to be zero. We said that. All the x is such that x is not allowed to be zero. That's our set notation. So that's big because 
that goes down, it can't be zero. There's a vertical asymptote there. That's what happens when, when we have this disconnected, these two pieces. We also have a horizontal asymptote. Same thing, right? We had all the y values except for zero. Couldn't equal zero. So that created a horizontal asymptote. All right? All right, on page 380, he wants to know, circle all the rational functions. So remember, rational functions, polynomial divided by a polynomial. Is this a polynomial divided by a polynomial? Yeah, it's divided by one. So that's a um, rational, all right? Uh, how about this one, Poly yep. Is this a polynomial? Well, this is divided by one, yep, that would work. That would work. Here it's very obvious, polynomial divided by polynomial. Very obvious. Ooh, that is not a polynomial. That one would not work. That is not a polynomial. That one would not work. All right? All right. So those are rational ones that we have. Okay, come down here. Let's see. Part B says, explain the remaining functions are not rational. These are not rational because those radical x is not a polynomial. 2 to the x is exponential. It's not a polynomial, so we can't divide two polynomials that we cannot have a rational. Big idea. Do you think the graphs of all rational functions will have a vertical asymptote? Well, remember, a vertical asymptote, all right, is any time where we divide by a variable that cannot equal 0, that's going to create this situation. We cannot have this be 0. So a lot of these are going to have vertical asymptotes, right? That'll have a vertical asymptote. Um, that'll have a vertical asymptote because I can't divide by 0. I can't divide by 0 here. That would be negative 2, right? I can't divide by uh, 0 here, all right? If there's a, there's a value here that makes that 0. But if you look at this one, this is a rational function, and there's no x on the bottom. So that's, you know, not going to have a vertical asymptote. So anytime there's a... There's a variable in the bottom. We'll have this situation where we are going to have an, a possibility with a vertical asymptote. All right, I'm going to skip to page 382. On 382, all we're talking about now is we're going to look at the next one, the x squared. Let's see what happens. So, again, x squared, this is very easy. This is 16. This is 25. Now, one really important thing to note here is anytime I square something, it becomes positive. So now, as a different, uh, different from the 1 over x, this is going to be 1, because 1 over 1 is 1, all right? This would be 1 over 4, a positive. These were negatives before. I know the numbers are different, but the most important thing here is looking at, when I went negative before, when I went negative before, my graph was all negative, right? When I went positive, my graph was all positive. But on this one, because I have a squared, my y values are going to be positive. All right? And you'll notice these are very similar. There's some symmetry here. So let's see what happens when we graph that. All right, so can we divide by 1 over 0? No, we can't divide by that. So let's do this. Uh, 1 over 1, good. 1 fourth. As I go further, um, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller, like that. And this one's going to go the same way, like this. Now, that's probably an asymptote, right? Because I can't divide by zero. All right. Let's look it down here. Let's do this. This is one. This is one fourth. This is 1 over 100. This is 1 over 10,000. This is 0. This is 1 over 10,000. This is 1 over 100. This is 1 over 4. And this is 1 when I square it. Now I'm doing the reciprocals of these. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 over 1 fourth is 4. 1 over 100, that's 100. That's a 10,000. That's, can't divide by zero, undefined. That's 10,000. That's 100. That's four. That's one. So let's take a look. So basically, as I get close here, 
Um, one fourth over goes up to four, right? And then it's just, it's gonna be real close to this. So we have another asymptote, same situation here. We have another asymptote, all right? So this time we have asymptotes here and here, same exact asymptotes, but our x value, our y values over here are positive instead of negative because we squared it. All right, that makes a big difference. Okay, so the, the, the graph compared to the other one is our second quadrant. Our second quadrant is now um, instead of our third quadrant because of our y variables were squared, making them positive. All right, so let's take a look at this. We want to describe the domain and range. So the domain, all possible x's, but not zero, same thing. So we go from negative infinity to zero, and from zero to positive infinity. Our range is a little bit different though this time, right? Our range now is from zero to infinity. There is an asymptote, and it cuts us off, but it doesn't break it into two pieces. End behavior. As x goes to the right forever, what does y do? As x goes to the right, it's again, it's approaching zero. Same thing on the left. As x goes to negative infinity, what does y do? Comes down here, I'm approaching zero. All right. Describe the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. We have a vertical asymptote, right? Right here when x equals zero. All right, and we know that from the graph. We can see it, obviously. We know it from uh, our table because one over zero squared does not work, all right? Our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. See that on the graph right here, okay? All right, now let's talk about this. So we had even and odd power functions. Remember, power functions are just x squared, x4, x1. Let's see what happens. Let's see what they look like, okay? So I'm gonna take you to Desmos. So here's x to the second, all right? What happens if I make it x to the fourth? Very similar. x to the sixth, very similar. x to the eighth, very similar. x to the 10th, very similar. They're all very similar. They, both, they all have this situation where they have asymptotes, x is zero, and they go up because we're squaring these values, our y values are always gonna be positive. Let's see what happens when we have negative, Odd powers, there's an odd first and third quadrant because now I can have y values that are negative. So all of our odd and all of our even have the same basic shape, right? So I want you to put this, all of our even are gonna look similar to this, where we have this situation going on. All of our odd ones are gonna look very similar to this. Now, <clears throat> These are just the power functions, the basic ones. We'll get to a point where they could move around and things like that in a little bit. We're not gonna do that today though, all right? All right, so let's talk about this in the real world, shall we? The real world. Modeling a situation, page 384. So suppose you wanna purchase a new laptop which will cost $220. Complete the table to show the amount of time it would take to save two hundred or $2,200 for weekly savings amounts. All right, so the time it'll take, let's see, 2,200 uh, $2, divided by $10 a week, that would take us 220 weeks. If I had um, 20 weeks or $20 a week, that would take me 110 weeks. The amount I have, how much I'm saving per week, that would take me to 55 weeks. Oh, that would be much better. Obviously, the more you save, the faster it's going to happen, right? $2,200, $50 a week, that would take us 44 weeks. $2,200, but $100 a week, that would take us 22 weeks. And what if we save $200 a week? That should be pretty fast, right? 11 weeks. I don't know if that's fast or not, though. All right, so let's graph that information down here. So we have <clears throat> our 
dollars that we're saving and we have our weeks. This is one of those rare situations where time is actually on the y-axis. It's kind of strange. All right, so 10 and 220. Um, I'm gonna go every two is 30. So this will be 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, all right, and so forth. Um, and do the same thing up here. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. All right, so we can get a general just here. I guess we need to go higher, don't we? 210, all right, so uh, 10 weeks, we had 220. So that's gonna be somewhere up here. Um, 20 weeks, we had 110. 20 weeks is gonna be here, somewhere in here. Right there, let's see. And then 40 is 55, so 40 is right here, 55 is somewhere in here. Now, I'm not doing this perfectly, I'm sorry. 50 was 44, somewhere in here, oh, it's starting to curve. Uh, 100 is 22, and 200 is 11. All right, again, it's not perfect, but you can see here, we have formed part of our rational function, didn't we? All right. So on the next page, on page two, 385, it says, can a function model this situation? Well, every time we had written something like this and we were dividing by something, correct? Oh, you can even see it in our table. What is that? Every time this value changed, that is our x value. So 2,200 divided by x. There you have it. That would be our model. All right. Write an algebraic equation and model the situation. Boom. Nailed it. Sorry. All right. Number four. Note five. Describe the asymptomatic, asymptotic, sorry, <laughs> asymptotic behavior of the graph in this situation. What happens to the graph as x approaches zero? Well, as x approaches zero, our y values approach infinity. They are going up to the moon, right? And that makes sense because the fewer amount we're saving each time, it should take us more weeks. What happens as x approaches infinity? As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches zero. So this makes sense. The more we save, the fewer the weeks it should take, right? That, that should make sense to us. All right, let's take a look at what assignment we're gonna do. You're gonna go to page 387, and you're gonna go and do all of number one on page 387. You're gonna go to page 388. You're gonna do number two, all right? And I would like you to stretch it out. See what happens. Stretch it out. So you're gonna do one, two, and stretch. Okay, good luck. Remember to ask for help in class.